We are all amazed by musicians' sensational performances during concert. But what if we could simply use the activity of our brains of, instead of fear of practice to generate a similar astonishing performance? You just heard the electrical activity of a sleeping, healthy brain, recorded in, in a laboratory setting using polysonography, the gold standard diagnostic tool to assess sleep quality. By placing electrodes over the scalp, we can measure brain activity and identify potential alteration during sleep. And thanks to technology, convert this activity into music. And what about this sound? This was instead the sleepy brain of a person with Parkinson's disease. I'm sure you would agree the latter was not a symphony reflecting someone who has fallen sound asleep. But wasn't Parkinson a mere movement disorder characterized by rigidity, slowness of movement and tremors? Well, Parkinson's is far more complex and we are the old people living with it suffer from a vast array of distressing and debilitating sleep disturbances such as insomnia, REM sleep behavior disorder, a terrible condition whereby people violently act of their dreams and sleep fragmentation, just to name a few. The sleep disturbances cause difficulty in falling and staying sound asleep during the night, as well as induce excessive sleepiness throughout the day, significantly affecting the quality of life of this individual. I am sure everyone in this room can relate to this. Being in bed, completely exhausted, tossing and turning, unable to fall asleep, thinking about all the duties and demands of the next day. Just think about how a single night of poor or no sleep influences your mood, motivation, energy and attention level, and your overall cognitive performances. Okay, now try to imagine this terrible situation every single night and day of your life. Terrible, isn't it? But what if we have a solution? Good morning, everyone. I'm Jacopo, a PhD student at McGill University. And today, I am excited to be here to share a powerful tool people with Parkinson can implement to improve the quality of their sleep and explain why this is so relevant to them and to our healthcare system. Did you know that Parkinson's is the second most common and fastest growing neurological condition on the planet? currently affecting more than 9 million people. This number is also expected to nearly duplicate in the next 20 years, making Parkinson a true pandemic, for which we have no vaccine yet. Indeed, despite considerable research effort, there are no viable treatments that can slow, stop or reverse the deterioration induced by this relentless condition. And the available sleep medication cannot yet restore natural sleep. Also, the sleep medication can be habit forming, are not always effective and can induce significant side effect. For example, they can impair balance and cognitive performance and even worsen sleep problems. As a result, millions, millions of people with Parkinson's are left unarmed against the sleep problem, essentially spending most of the nighttime awake and most of the day feeling exhausted and sleepy. So, which powerful tool can people with Parkinson implement in the daily routine to improve the quality of their sleep at night? Well, after reviewing the literature, my team and I confirmed that physical training, yes, exercise, can improve the quality of sleep in this clinical population. Incredible, right? By simply and purposely moving their bodies and sweating throughout the day, people with Parkinson can improve the quality of their sleep at night. Remarkably, physical training, which is safe and relatively inexpensive compared to medication, has been shown to have several essential benefits, simultaneously improving general fitness, sleep quality 
and many other complications normally associated with Parkinson's. No wonder why exercise is now considered a key component in the rehabilitation toolkit of this relentless condition. Also, our review shows that simply moving the body is yes, nece is yes necessary, but not sufficient. And to maximize the effect of exercise on sleep, specific training intensity must be implemented. For people with Parkinson's, more vigorous intensity, which significantly increase breathing and heart rate and can be rather uncomfortable at times, should be utilized. But what we still need to find out is which exercise modality, if any, is significantly superior at improving sleep. For this reason, with the support of my team, I'm currently leading a novel, a methodologically sound investigation, whereby we randomly allo allocate people with Parkinson's to different training programs. They come to the lab and for 12 weeks, they perform either aerobic exercise on a bicycle, resistant training using weights, or a combination of these two programs to identify which is the most effective. Now, suppose all those different programs will be proven to be equally efficacious. Well, in that case, people with Parkinson will be able to choose and pick whichever exercise they do prefer to improve the quality of their sleep at night, as long as they exercise consistently and vigorously. Yet, sound sleep is not only needed to feel alert and refresh, ready to face all the daily duties and activities, such as a wonderful presentation, or to create pleasant music. It also assumes a significant role in Parkinson's progression. We now know that people who suffer from both the disease and alteration in the basic structures of normal sleep, or as we scientists call it, sleep architectures, can experience a faster progression of Parkinson's. So please, let me break down what sleep architecture is and which alteration can speed up Parkinson's. Every night when we go to bed and hopefully fall asleep, we experience two major types of sleep, non-rapid eye movement sleep or non-REM and rapid eye movement or REM sleep. Non-REM is further subdivided in three different stages based on the depth of our sleep. And so we begin our sleep episode in the lighter non-REM sleep stage. Then we move down to stage two and then to stage three, which is also known as a deep non-REM sleep. And finally, we enter REM. We repeat the standard cycle, which lasts on average 90 minutes, four to five times every single night. This constitute our normal sleep architectures. But really, really what I would like to stress here is that the activity of our brain changes quite significantly during the, those different sleep stages and these different brain waves played by our brain during sleep carry out specific and essential function to support and promote our health. Among others, slow oscillation, a unique partner of brain activity that occurs only in the deepest stage of non-REM sleep and looks like huge, powerful slow wave, during which our neurons fire together and then get silent together, are essential for restorative and repairing processes like musicians who, every day after practice, clean and maintain their instruments. The amount of this low wave is significantly reduced in Parkinson, and people who show the larger reduction in slow waves tend to experience a faster motor deterioration. Sleep spindles and REM sleep are two other significant aspects that play a significant role in the progression of Parkinson's. Spindles are short bursts of fast neural activity, which mostly occur in the lighter non-REM sleep stages. REM, in contrast, is characterized by intense neural activity, which almost resemble wakefulness, sharp and rapid eye movement, and vivid dreams. These two features of sleep significantly support our cognitive function. Like musicians who, every time, tune their instruments to generate a perfect sound. And, as you probably guess it, people with Parkinson's and more considerable reduction in the number of sleep spindles and the duration of REM sleep tend to experience a faster cognitive deterioration, which will likely lead to dementia. So, we know that alteration in sleep architecture plays a significant negative role in Parkinson's, and exercise 
which can improve these specific slip markers, increasing the power of slow waves, the number of slip spindles, and the duration of REM sleep, may slow the motor and cognitive deterioration associated with Parkinson's disease. What also fascinates me is that by monitoring the slip markers over the course of the disease could provide us with potential non-invasive tests, or as we scientists call it, biomarkers, crucial to simultaneously map the progression and the severity of Parkinson and the effectiveness of any treatment, including physical training. As a scientist, I am deeply fascinated by the activity of the brain at night and interest in researching the optimal modality to implement physical training to enrich the poorer Parkinsonian sleep with all the good neural activities, which are so essential for our health, but lost in this clinical population. And as a former athlete, I'm generally intrigued by the question of whether physical training, a simple yet powerful lifestyle choice that everyone, really everyone can make, may slow the still irreversible deterioration of Parkinson's disease. Today, I hope to spark your interest in and curiosity about the crucial lure of sleep and exercise in the fastest growing neurological condition. With my work, I hope to answer some of those questions and make a small but significant contribution by demonstrating that exercise can tune again the sleeping brainwave of Parkinson in an astonishing musical performance. Thank you very much.